Hello everyone and welcome to round 4 of the Meltwater Champions Chester Finals. It's Vladislav Artemiev versus Magnus Carlsen and uh, we're not only going to show one game, uh, we're going to show one game plus uh, two parts of um, uh, two other games. So we're going to skip game one, game one between the two of them ended in a draw. Uh, not a lot happened there. It was a fine game but nothing uh, out of the ordinary. Uh, this here is game two, a position from game two where Magnus had the white pieces uh, and... Um, well, the, the position is uh, very, very drawish, uh, but uh, in the game uh, after bishop to e6, Artemiev offered a trade of bishops, Magnus played this knight to c7 move. So he offered his bishop uh, and a knight to win the rook on a6. Uh, Artemiev, uh, well, of course, uh, went for this, bishop captures, knight captures, b captures, and uh, Artemiev uh, proceeded uh, just, uh, you know, uh, to, to win this end game. So not uh, the, the greatest of ex exchanges for Magnus. So this is what happened in game two, and in game two Artemiev took the lead in the match so now Magnus needs to bounce back uh, but uh, in the next game uh, he has the black pieces and this is game three the game that we're going to show uh, in its fullest so let's uh, check it out uh, and see what happens there as we're also gonna uh, briefly comment on game four so uh, Artemiev with the white pieces opens with e4 uh, we have knight uh, we have c5 Magnus goes for the Sicilian defense uh, not knight to f3 but knight to c3 uh, trying to go for some sort of a close Sicilian and knight to c6 by Magnus we have bishop to b5 and immediately challenging this bishop with knight to d4 so here usually people just go bishop back to c4 because you do not want to allow this trade of bishop for a knight, but uh, uh, Artemiev just continues knight to f3. We have a6 by Magnus, and now bishop back to d3. Uh, and only now that the bishop has been played uh, uh, placed on uh, such an unfavorable square, uh, Magnus retreats with the knight, knight to c6. And okay, we have castles by Artemiev, d6 by Magnus, and now bishop to c4, getting ready to strike in the center with d4 to open up the position. Uh, e6 by Magnus, and now d4. So striking in the center, c captures, knight captures, and now knight to f6. Uh, and here uh, there um, uh, is a game where bishop to d2 was played, uh, or rather uh, bishop to d2, not bishop to d2, bishop to e3, bishop to d2 would be just weird. Uh, but here Magnus plays, uh, sorry, Artemiev plays knight captures on c6, and it is now as of move 10 that we have a completely new game. Uh, so let's see what happens. We have B captures on C6 and Rook to E1 now. Maybe with some ideas of pushing E5. So Magnus prevents this, pushes E5 himself. Uh, but this does open up this diagonal for Artemiev's slight square bishop. So Bishop to G5, Bishop to E7 and now Queen to D3. Preparing to bring the other Rook into the game as well. H6 asking do you want to trade or do you want to go back? Of course Artemiev wants to keep his Bishop here. As uh, Magnus is probably castling king side. So you want to keep the option of playing queen to g3. And then you're going to have a lot of pressure on that uh, castled king. Uh, Magnus does castle king side. And now h3. Uh, we have a5. Uh, and now bishop back to b3. So what do you do here? Uh, bishop to a6 uh, doesn't really do all that much for black. You're just going to uh, shift the queen over to g3 like we already mentioned. So queen to c7. And now rook a to d1. We have bishop to e6 by Magnus countering the light square bishop on b3. And now knight to a4. Uh, at some point we're probably going to uh, eliminate this pawn. Or somehow maybe uh, capture here. Uh, and then maybe win the c5 square for our knight. But it's also just very useful there guarding the b6 and c5 squares. Maybe the bishop can uh, help out in the future. So all in all uh, a well placed knight. But uh, most of all we want to trade this bishop um, uh, for our for the bishop on e6 and then we're gonna push some pawns here basically so here magnus says all right you allow me to push d5 uh, and of course uh, that's basically the sicilian dream i will do that so d5 by magnus and now uh, a very special moment where uh, Artemiev has to choose to, uh, b between capturing on d5 and playing g3 right away, uh, queen to g3. And the thing is, if you capture on d5 right away, it makes sense. For example, c captures and queen to g3, you're now threatening bishop captures on h6 uh, as the g-pawn is pinned, but also you're just threatening to win a pawn here. Uh, but Artemiev had a different idea. He played queen to g3 and he left this pawn 
uh, here uh, to be captured by the uh, by the knight, and this is exactly what Magnus goes for. Uh, knight to h5, uh, somewhat uh, a safer play, but Magnus goes uh, for for the kill. Knight captures on e4. Artemiev grabs the exchange with rook captures on e4. We have d captures on e4, and now of course bishop captures on h6. Artemiev uh, threatens checkmate, so bishop to f6. We have to defend g7, and now bishop captures on e6. We have f captures on e6 now tripling Carlson's pawn here and knight to c5 now uh, threatening just knight captures here to win uh, back the exchange but also uh, before that threat there is the threat of rook to d7 and that's just game the queen will have to move and we're gonna capture here uh, checkmating the, the the black king the g7 pawn would be attacked three times so rook a to d8 magnus cannot allow this and now rook to e1 Artemiev not uh, interested in trading uh, uh, rooks. We have queen to f7, now guarding the e6 square, uh, and knight captures on e4 now. Uh, so what do you play here? Well, you uh, have to add more defenders to, to the g7 pawn, uh, but Magnus decides to go just bishop back to e7, not allowing this uh, tension to remain here, but also just opening up this uh, f file for the queen and rook. So now if... Uh, uh, the, the f2 pawn will not be sufficiently protected, we can always capture that. Uh, but this allows Artemiev uh, the, the opportunity to uh, just lift the rook, rook to e3, and now Magnus has to play a move, but only one move is playable here for black, uh, but it's uh, maybe not so clear as Magnus failed to play it, uh, and that move is king to h8. You have to play king to h8. Magnus played king to h7, uh, which kind of makes more sense, but um, it loses the game for him. So here, bishop to g5 was played by Artemiev uh, with the simple threat of just queen to h4 check, picking up the bishop on e7. So Magnus retreated with king to g8, but now uh, feel free to pause the video and win this game for Artemiev uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations uh, on finding this uh, uh, incredible idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is rook to f3. And that's why the king does not belong here. You had to move the king in the corner so you can bring the queen over to g7. But now there really isn't all that much you can do. Uh, it, this was not played in the game. I'm just showing you what would happen. Queen would have to move. And now we repeat bishop to h6. We threaten checkmate. Now the king, uh, queen cannot remain on f7. We're just going to capture the queen. So rook to f7 has to help out with the defense. Now queen to g6. Going after queen captures on e6. Rook to g3 is coming. So queen to f8 adding another defender here and now rook to g3 and now uh, if you look at the position there's uh, really not uh, an active move that black can play here uh, he can just wait and see what will happen the e6 pawn will fall and all of these pawns are really weak uh, black has no no counterplay here if you try something like rook d4 to put pressure on the knight we can just play bishop to e3 chase away the rook after rook moves c3 uh, and now there really isn't anything more uh, you can play here uh, if you try giving back the exchange we're just going to capture it but we're still up a pawn and black spawn structure is completely messed up this would be an easy win for white however uh, Artemiev was very low on the clock and he did not see this he played bishop to h6 he repeated the position and Magnus very happily repeated king to h7 bishop to g5 king to g8 and bishop to h6 and it was in this position on move 30 that they agreed to a draw uh, which means that game one ended in a draw, then game two ended by Artemiev winning the game, uh, the one that we already um, uh, mentioned, where Magnus just sacrificed uh, uh, two pieces for the rook, and then uh, it just didn't work out here. Artemiev also had a win, but uh, he didn't find it due to being very low uh, on the clock, and now comes game four that we're just going to show that this position, uh, Magnus uh, played, uh, played a fine game, uh, he, he attacked, he had a winning position, then Artemiev had a winning position, then Magnus Magnus and this is basically the end position uh, where Magnus is down a whole rook Magnus has the white pieces here uh, and he can't continue attacking the black king there simply aren't um, uh, any 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 useful checks here and Magnus was checking the black king he was just del del delivering checks all over the place and now he was hoping that Artemiev pre-moves uh, you know 
pre-moving is that when you play a move uh, before your opponent play the move so you don't spend any time on the clock when you're playing online. Uh, Magnus pr uh, played queen captures on c5 with check and he was hoping that Artemiev has already pre-moved uh, something like king to h4 or king to h6 so he can just win his queen. Uh, but Artemiev did not pre-move, he just captured Carlsen's queen and it was again in this position on move 51 in game 4 that Magnus Carlsen resigned the game. So in the match against Vladislav Artemiev, uh, two wins for Artemiev and two draws. Not uh, not a good one for Magnus. So uh, big uh, a big success for, uh, uh, for for Chuck Norris here. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game, or rather those are the games. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed them. Uh, I would like to thank John Sved, Hashko Mayer, David Kimura, uh, myself for making great videos, and Vlad Ularu for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of this fine event, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.